Lucas. You guys want to participate in um, uh, the project is entitled Wish for Change. Um, and I'm asking folks to write one word that they wish for. For example, my piece will have love, unity, faith, um, justice. Yeah, challenges that we have to overcome. Yeah, there's have some chalk right here, and um, we'll have one person that wrote hope. So anything you wish for, find a spot. Find a spot and, and write your wish. My name is Naida Cuevas. I'm an interdisciplinary artist. I mostly engage in conversations around identity, specifically Latino identity in this country. And I create my art in order to create a dialogue. Uh, Wish for Change, which is the one I created here today, or was created during the pandemic last year, um, while I was digesting and processing all the events that were happening. And I wanted to create an image that was kid-friendly or that was um, inspirational in a way that we could introduce these conversations to kids. All right, so if you guys can um you guys want to color one of the dandelions over here for me? No. Look, I, I already do the outline in white. Okay. There's colors right here. Can you be a little bit excited? No. <laughs> no. So choose, yeah, do it together. And then, all right. But the boy is mine. It's my son. I can claim him though. At this point, I can huh? claim him. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hola. Can you guys want to do the other than or another the other one down there for me? Choose the colors first. Choose the color. Or you can create your own. Okay. My art. Uh, it's community driven. I, I, I needs the participation or uh, of the viewer uh, and I like to find ways to engage with children because I have one myself he's one of the uh, figures painted on the in the project or the inspiration for, for the project and um, uh, it's a fun way to get people to talk about different things and that's what I I have found art to be a good conversation starter Thank you for in, uh, doing some sidewalk art. I think all art um, just beautifies uh, spaces. Uh, utility boxes are plain and simple, gray or some random color, and it's a perfect uh, surface for artists to, you know, do their creative projects or ideas. Wow. I love the name of this project because I think it, it does transform the community and in a couple of different ways. One, it makes art more visible and when you see the artist painting it, you realize, oh, there's a person behind that art. So it personalizes it. 
makes it more accessible. Um, and these were steel gray or dark green steel, you know, boxes, pretty ugly. And it changes them and it makes them into something more than what they were that can excite people and bring joy and laughter, um, maybe inspire those young artists that are going to that school down the street. Oh, wow, I could do that, you know? That, isn't that a fun thing to try out? Um, I think it's just, the, the name of the project is just perfect, transforming people. And a couple of times people driving by would say to me, you know, I love your box, but I love all of the boxes. I'm seeing them all over town. And it's just a really kind of a unifying um, project. Everybody feels a part of it, even though they're, they're viewing it and not creating it. The project is called Transforming Belmont, uh, based on the fact that some of these utility boxes are called transformer boxes. Uh, the ones that we were allowed to paint are the ones that uh, change the traffic lights uh, because the actual transformer boxes are high voltage and we're not allowed to paint them because it was considered too risky for the artists. And uh, there's a lack of public art in Belmont and especially during COVID, uh, we wanted to try to bring some joy to people that were not allowed to go to museums when they were all closed. Um, so we started this project two years ago because the, the grant uh, process is the year before. And last year we got money to do three boxes, uh, which we started. And then this year we got a very, very generous grant from the Belmont Cultural Council. So we were allowed to pay the artists more and do four additional boxes, thanks to them. And then we also had a very generous donation from local realtor Ann Mann, uh, which allowed us to do a fifth box. So now we have uh, f uh, eight boxes, which is terrific. We don't have an actual inventory. We have to drive around and look for boxes and then ask if it's okay for us to have an artist paint them. When a project like this comes to the town, uh, it's a great opportunity to showcase different talents within the community, local artists. Um, it's also an opportunity to share um, through art what people feel and think of um, regarding Belmont. So a lot of the projects that were painted reflect, um, you know, different stories or different um, pictures that, you know, people think of when they think of the town of Belmont. And you can see that specifically throughout the five boxes that were recently painted this past summer. We worked with the them. Belmont Art Association, Dari, Naomi, and Ellen to identify the boxes that um, would be best to paint in town, both from, uh, you know, who owns them. Sometimes we don't know who actually has authority over the boxes. Um, so we had to determine that. And then they worked to determine the best locations in terms of what should be painted first. Um, they were really looking for locations that saw a lot of foot traffic or a lot of vehicle traffic. So the residents in town could enjoy the public art. We, we wrote a call for entries, um, which we published on our website and then announced uh, on Facebook and various other media. And we had a deadline and artists uh, submitted uh, their designs. They were allowed to submit up to three designs each. And uh, so then those were all put into um, a Google doc for everybody to uh, look at and give their opinions on and uh, we got a lot of submissions this year and it was uh, it was as Naomi said very hard to pick uh, mm. the appropriate ones part of the design process was based on um, the artist's experience we had some submissions from graphic designers that looked very interesting but they didn't appear to have had any uh, experience doing this sort of outdoor public art and it's a very complicated, involved process and uh, takes a long time and artists need to be very responsible um, and uh, be able to follow directions because if they don't, then the artwork isn't going to be durable 
and uh, it would be a shame to do all this work and not have it uh, withstand the weather and, and time. One thing I wanted to add is um, Adria Arch helped an awful lot. She had a lot of experience in Arlington. The boxes in Arlington are also beautiful and they're always adding them. So Adria Arch, who uh, did a um, workshop for the Belmont Art Association previously on color paint, um, had a meeting, we had a meeting with all of the artists to start and she reviewed with them the process and she was there and she shared paint and she shared her experience. So we were very lucky to have somebody from Arlington who had already had much experience with this. I'm a big proponent of public art. I love the push that we have now nowadays to um, have public art outside and everywhere you, you look. You know, especially during the pandemic, I've noticed how important public art is for people. You know, communities that never thought about doing it have taken it on, deciding that, yes, we need, we need this in our lives. I mean, things are pretty dire all over the place, but it's a way for um, expressivity and a way to um, bring some joy and light and color to, to people. My work isn't political, but I am, you know, very much interested in having a dialogue with the outside world. And, uh, you know, without thinking too much about it, I, you know, I am uh, hoping to, to reach people more about sort of you know, universal concerns and universal um, kinds of things in a very abstract way. So you're not going to find anything pointing directly to this or that in my work. You're going to have to have a little dialogue with it yourself. I'm hoping that, that I am evoking feelings, you know, not necessarily net recognizable shapes of things, but Feelings like joy, like hopefulness, like excitement, like playfulness, you know, those, are, those, those things have always come through in my work. Um, I, I, I can't really help it. It just is a natural thing. I love coming upon public art. I think it's just delightful. It's a surprising kind of wonderful, um, you know, event when you're walking in a city and you come across something unexpectedly outside. And I love that you don't have to go into a museum, it's accessible to anybody, and it also starts conversations with people that you might never talk about with anything else. So if everybody's standing around talk, looking at a sculpture out in the public park, you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, you're going to, you know, be next to somebody who's looking at it too. And uh, I just love that. Awesome. Were you biking by? That? You saw you saw what we were doing as you biked by? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I think it's great. I know a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine did the other one. Um, oh yeah? On Trapello Road, yeah. What uh, who was that? Ian. Oh Ian, yeah, yeah, he did the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, this, is so this is great. More than merrier. Yeah, we've got four more this year. Well, there's no shortage of these. I did the daffodil up, uh, where are you? I did the daffodil up on the top. I haven't seen the other boxes. I need to go and see them. Well, that one, where is the dogs? Oh, it's um, down from Cushing Square a little bit. The art engages the community by showing a diverse type of artists and artwork. So it uh, exposes them to pieces and artwork and uh, their voice and their journey that uh, you know they normally might not see if they don't venture out of their own um, area or if they're uh, their own type of art that they're uh, used to seeing. So it, it introduces like a. Of a, someone in the community who might only be used to seeing like real art, they might uh, introduce them into abstract or a different type of art or done by a different artists who they might not know of. 
Um, the reaction from the uh, people uh, in, in the Belmont community has been really wonderful. Um, people have told me that it brightens their walks along the way. They told me they really enjoy it. And um, one, one person in particular actually was uh, having breakfast and he came out to me and he said, oh, I've been watching you paint the entire time. And he said it really moved me because my grandmother loved pansies. And so much so that he had asked me uh, about sort of commissioning a piece so then he could have it because it's sort of a, a reminder of his grandmother. And as he uh, said that she loved uh, pansies and uh, florals in general and uh, so much so he even said that it would brighten his mother's day so he was going to call her and have her come by so that she could see it. Um, I'm a pop artist and so um, the reason why I, uh, I sort of uh, paint um, uh, was because um, uh, when I was younger my mom had uh, two vases of flowers on the kitchen table. She had carnations and roses and I had asked her why she loved uh, the carnations when the roses were clearly like more beautiful. So she had me come back two days later and I looked at the uh, carnations and the roses and she asked me what I had thought of it and I said oh I said clearly the carnations are the more beautiful flower and she said the carnations have always been beautiful and so she wanted me to see that there's beauty in everyone and everything and so my art kind of speaks to that and that it's sort of the unforgotten images or overlooked items so whether it's a pansy that we go by you know uh, quite a few you know on our walk because they are so many of them, sometimes their beauty is overlooked. So that is the base for a lot of the pieces for my artwork. It's taking sometimes what people might think is the mundane and highlighting them in a way that showcases their beauty. But you kind of see the area, right? Let me just do this for you. Just so that there's no anxiety or confusion. Oh uh, yeah, you see, you're already better at it than I am. Better what? <laughs> nope, I had the day off today. This is why I took my test today. Yep. I do work tomorrow. So essentially, so, oh, really? yep. you do this, all right? Ah, yeah. uh, uh, long strokes. As yeah. opposed to like, Which, like, cause sometimes people go like this, mm -hmm. and then you can already see. You can see the. In terms of the importance of my work, I don't know that there is one thing that shines as being most important, but if I had to choose, um, I think it would be the content. Because I don't necessarily find myself drawn to just one material, whether it's virtual, whether it's pen and paper, whether it's watercolor or acrylic. I just love to create based on the requirements of the story. So I think. What I'm saying is content is most important. <laughs> uh, and then I, I just genuinely love to mold the colors and things that I'm working on based around the content. The design of my box was really meant to give somebody something pretty to look at. So that was basically the concept. I wanted to make something that brightened the day of people. Um, I think about like a fire, uh, you know, station and just considering the many things that people will have to kind of look at and the various anxieties that go in through people's minds in terms of the hustle and bustle. And I just want to create something that provided some relief. So that's really why I wanted to be colorful and uh, sort of like an experience that takes you outside of your day-to-day. Uh, -day. And so that encompassed colors and birds uh, flying and flapping, um, reminiscent of like the really nice um, kind of sunset that you experience when you're in that location. So, um, that's really all I was playing with. And then along the way, I wanted there were some, some pieces that were... Um, a little bit more in the moment, whether it's getting one of the firefighters to add some dots and some designs on the piece or shifting and finding a way to make it a little bit more um, playful. Um, 
so yeah so it's really all about putting people in a different world um one that that was a little more easier to go with it was very great being able to connect with the you know belmont fire station i really love their support first and foremost um i think in terms of the connection between me and them it certainly happened by oh i need to use a bathroom to clean up these brushes would you happen to have any like you know sinks i could use um, knocking even if it was to use the restroom or a sink or anything and generally they were just very gracious and kind and you know after probably the first or second session and the amount of times they had seen me there was just a really great reception from the community of Belmont as well as them uh, I remember specifically getting you know drinks from one of them uh, the people that worked in the fire station to being able to store my materials there um, to even wanting them to have uh, a part in the making of it. Um, they sent one of the, the firefighters to actually help along with the piece. Um, I think it was just really, that's my aim whenever I engage with a project that's location-based. I love to get somebody from the community to, you know, approve or sign it in a way, uh, because it's all about, you know, they get to live with it every day. They get to see it every day. So um, that ownership was very important for me. And um, their willingness to participate was was something I really thoroughly appreciated. He's like, nah. So um, it's kind of fun. It's kind of like these dots here that I have. And I thought, you know, you could add them. Do you have a preference? No, you don't have a preference? What about here? We'll do, what do you want to do? Yeah, I don't know. He's like, they just sent me. Yeah. So, orange here. You can do as many as you'd like. Uh, I don't know how many firemen is there in there. Uh, yeah, throw six on there. Um, yeah, right over there. Uh, you could do like a combination of bigger ones. What's your name? Billy. Billy, all right. Thanks for helping us, Billy. Uh, six firemen. Yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> They're like sandwiches. And I think that when the Transformer Box project came along, that I thought, well, okay, it's it's very different for me, but maybe I could give it a try. It's okay to step out of my comfort zone, I think. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure. And as far as, you know, the inspiration behind my proposal, it came from having lived away from the area for a while, returning back and seeing things really with fresh eyes and um, loving what I was seeing, especially in the spring, almost like, did those flowers always grow here? Dang, <laughs> I, don't re I don't remember that many of those um, kinds of flowers and, you know, I'm not remembering the names right now, but uh, I had plenty of reference material from my photos and doing the Instagram 100 day art challenge. Um, so when I heard about the Transformer Box project, I thought, oh, okay, let me take a leap. You know, it's, I, I know my subject matter would be interesting enough to do flowers that are common to this area and I would enjoy doing it. I have to enjoy what I'm doing. Um, as far as the acrylics and the scale, because I had been used to doing maybe 11 by 14, 12 by 16, those are my average sizes. So a transformer box was very large for me. Using a new medium, relatively new medium, I had just dabbled a little bit in acrylic. But I thought, you know, the only way I'll learn something is by giving it a try. And I wanted to blow them up so that we could see them as if we were insects looking at them, um, blow them up really large and get into the details and the nuances of them and uh, hopefully inspire other people to appreciate the world like I was seeing it um, and, and see Belmont from that, from that vantage point as well. A lot of work. I spent, um, I'm going to say, 15 hours on the box that I did, 
I spent 30 hours on a box I did in Arlington five years ago. So either I'm getting quicker, I think I am, um, but it's not like an afternoon's work. No, 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 no. You have to prep it, you know, you have to sand it and clean it and then prime it and then paint the design and, you know, make sure that's all good and then you have to varnish it. So, you know, there's a lot of work involved. As far as um, continuing this, I think we really want to do, I think the boxes we're going to write the grant for one more year. But the truth is, Ann Mann stepped up when we were short of funds. And we're hoping that that's going to be a model for others. I asked a couple of banks in town. And we hope that people will step up and support this and really we would love to start something, a campaign or something, where the town will support public art and will realize how important this is to the life of the entire town and, and the local community at large. Belmont doesn't have to be a place that you drive through. Belmont could be a place that you come to to see the art. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of our dreams. We dream big.